Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Peter coming at you through the tubes of the internet. Today, taking a look at the latest release from Jeff Rosenstock, an album called Hell Mode. I'm excited to discuss and glad you could join. Hell Mode, released September 1st, 2023 via Polyvinyl Records, is the fifth studio LP from LA-based punk rocker Jeff Rosenstock. Jeff handles vocal duties on the record along with a myriad of different instruments, and he's joined by his backing band bassist John DiDominici, drummer Kevin Iguchi, electric guitarist Mike Huguenor, and acoustic guitarist Dan Podthist. Backstory Jeff Rosenstock is the DIY punk legend who's used the internet to freely distribute 100 plus records by he and his friends, turning the anti-capitalist themes of his tunes into praxis, and fighting back against the scum fuckery of the music industry every step of the way throughout his multi-decade career. Combining slice-of-life stories with incisive political commentary, Jeff specializes in larger-than-life tunes that remain melodic and accessible, even when employing some pretty out-there dynamic song structures. Moving into the modern era and performing under his own name, Jeff swapped some of the rawness from his punk and ska roots for more indie sensibilities, but certainly never shies away from crafting intense and explosive cuts. On Hell Mode, Jeff continues to chart new territory into what folk punk can be, incorporating more surf rock elements and chilling way out on some of his smallest cuts ever. There's always new and unique aspects of Hell World to drill down on, and when Jeff's in Hell mode, he's really dialed into that vibe. It's a wonderful thing to behold, as always. Track by track analysis. This record has 11 tracks and clocks in at 41 minutes. Hell mode's packed with content for its full runtime. Instrumentals take the space they need to build, but never overstay their welcome and each cut feels like it has its own distinct topic to discuss while also enriching the overarching themes. It feels like a super fine-tuned presentation. Track 1, Will You, Still You? This opening cut is hyper fixated on a single question. When shit hit the fan, is you still a fan? With Jeff repeatedly asking variations of that question to the listener in a bunch of clever ways. The vocals throughout the intro have a low fi frazzled quality, and that effect feels most pronounced when Jeff delivers the lines. This cycle of mistakes and forgiveness is a recurring theme in Rosenstock's music, and though he's made a lot of positive changes on this record, that proclivity towards fucking up remains and he's put it front and center to start this album. Jeff calls on loved ones to say snap out of it and punch him in his stupid face when he takes it too far, but by the end of the cut Rosenstock has used up the last of their goodwill and they've fallen out of love as a result. The track builds from a thin guitar backing to a chaotic drum roll leading an over full mix as things come crashing down for the conclusion, and I think that huge presentation coupled with a laser focused theme make for an awesome opener. Track 2, Head on this second tune, Jeff spits rapid fire lines over a minimal drum machine backing that come off like a barrage of intrusive thoughts leaving his time bomb head. Rosenstock questions his ability to make any sense of the world when he doesn't know what aspects of the for-profit news can be trusted. In just a minute and change, this track nails the neurotic anxiety of trying to decode reality and also the fear of having zero protections against dissenting opinions. Jeff laments that if you step out of line even the slightest bit, you'll be disappeared by the wet work thugs at Capitol. I think the quick burst of nerves here is a perfect way to lay the groundwork for themes that get explored more deeply later, and this is a great tune in its own right. Track 3, Liked You Better. Creeping out the 
Coming off the chaos of the previous track, this tune feels like a down the middle poppy palate cleanser. The infectious quality of this cut is undeniable and the bouncy repetitive chorus seems perfect for getting a live audience riled up. The lyrics also feel straightforward, but they aren't nearly as upbeat as the bubbly instrumental presentation. There's a foreboding sense of dread associated with this nondescript stressor Jeff has on his mind, and it plays out like a parasitic leech draining his mental bandwidth. Even though there aren't exactly specific lines that grab my attention here, it's near impossible to avoid getting caught up in the overall energy of the tune. Jeff lays this one down in under three minutes, and I think it works great as a catchy little diversion. Track 4, Doubt. Speak, even if it feels weird. Jeff and Co. use a 90s alt feel with picked notes and ringing chords for the first half of this cut, as lyrics request that the listener hang in there, continuing to speak out even when it's painful or even when they can't physically speak at all, gesticulating and flailing around to get their point across. The monotony of being stuck in a rut is perfectly communicated here, with lines about coming up against a slow motion kill screen and dealing with that routine grind every day forever. The cut sticks with the dreamy instrumentation for the majority of its runtime, but once it finally reaches the bridge, it absolutely fucking rips. Jeff's command to the listener changes to kill all the doubt, noting he doesn't know how to scrape the dog shit off the heart of the world but that we're all stuck on this diseased planet together and our only option is to keep on keeping on. The instrumentation likewise commands attention. I love when the overdriven guitars get pierced through by squeaky, whistle-esque feedback. It's a really abrasive element that can't be ignored. I think this is an incredible cut. It grabbed me right away as a single and it gets to the heart of the record's themes of perseverance and growth in a really compelling way. Awesome tune. Track 5, Future is Dumb. As we swiftly into darkness. This cut examines the fact that the current moment was once the future and asks the question, does this feel utopian? Noting a branching path away from the future we didn't do and ending up at one that feels petty and heartless. Lyrics about being numb to hypernormalization use imagery of landfills with garbage shaped into mountains and demonic means-tested welfare programs designed to starve out the most vulnerable folks in society, forming a picture of a neoliberal hell of our own creation. I love how approaching the breakdown, Jeff has the wherewithal to say, I don't care if I'm right or wrong, I'm not going to do some debate lord shit where I entertain the idea that, um, actually the world's the best it's ever been. Jeff is sticking to his guns that the future is dumb because it's patently obvious. Throughout the album art and merch for the record, the phrase the earth will survive you features prominently, and though the line doesn't appear word for word on the album, the spirit is definitely alive in this cut. When people say we're destroying the earth, referring to ecological collapse, what they're really meaning is we're destroying the earth's ability to support life. As Jeff notes here, the earth is a damn rock, it doesn't give a fuck about you and is indifferent to your suffering. The breakdown here is just freakish. It feels like one of the most massive and thimic pieces Jeff has ever constructed. I could listen to this last minute on repeat forever and probably never get bored. This is my favorite track on the record. Track six, Soft Living. When you think of me. This cut has lyrical themes that are locked in with its instrumental, with images of smog and smoke in the lyrics, and a blown out, almost farty quality to the chugging guitarist providing the backing instrumental. The monotone presentation of the vocal combined with the grindy instrumental creates a trance-like quality, and Jeff tries some hypnotic calls to action while the listener is under this spell. Despite the layer of scum and gloom over the entire track, some really vivid lyrics manage to pierce through. 
The lines about Aaron Carter ranting in public really paint a picture of being mentally unwell, and it's fittingly dark for the surrounding tune. As the track's winding down, it keeps landing on the question, how did we go so wrong? And it just really does feel like we're cooked. The record has no problem going nihilistic as hell, along with the more hopeful moments surrounding, and I love how unapologetically dark this tune is. Track 7, Heal Mode. I never thought I'd say it, but it's hard to hate the rain in California. The album's sort of mirror image title track here has a super pleasant presentation, and it stands as one of the smallest tunes Jeff has ever done, downright microscopic by his standards. Plenty of his stuff starts small and then builds to something bigger, but this one just remains laid back throughout. Lyrics have a similarly cozy vibe, noting the pitter-patter of rain as it falls on empty streets, and swapping the hustle and bustle of daily life for folks hunkered down inside watching TV. There's a melancholy element to the solitude Jeff finds here too, with him standing alone in the moonlight, wondering if anything he does matters, and reflecting on the year plus wait time that might lapse before LA sees another similar rainy day. To close the tune, Jeff gets in on the cuddly quality himself. When everyone else goes outside and commerce can resume, that's his cue to go inside and spend perfect lazy days with a loved one. Jeff's movements are counter to the rest of society, but here there's a comfort in that. As small as the cut is, Jeff finds a little space to let longtime collaborator Laura Stevenson in on the bridge vocals, and it makes for a really sweet and precious sound. This track is something that seems unique in Rosenstock's catalog, and I think he pulls it off great here. Perfect chatty dears are all you need is me, and all I need is you. Track 8 Life Admin. Little washer on the ground, why didn't I pick? As the album starts winding down, track 8 finds Jeff feeling like a fraud. Getting hung up on trivial, bougie grievances like long lines at the coffee shop or subpar pizza parlor experiences. And though these problems are insignificant, Rosenstock still feels the urge to run from them. Noting how his disposable income allows for a desert vacation at a moment's notice, or how he could just put on some chill tunes and grill while the world around him burns. Lyrics here seem a little stream of consciousness, but that loose vibe was definitely intentional. Jeff mentions not wanting to write a song, and this track feels lower effort in a cool way. These last few tunes tap into the classic singer songwritery tone Jeff's been dabbling in recently, and that chill vibe works well here, especially the way the word complaining repeats seemingly forever on the fade out. It's not the album's most exciting cut, but it still nails the mood it's going for. Track 9, I Want to Be Wrong. On this tune, Jeff wants to be wrong because he's envisioning the most pessimistic, horrible outcome for all the world's current problems. He notes that hatred and fascism are taking hold more than ever, and the leaders we're counting on to save us actually thrive off of and profit from that conflict. Rosenstock recalls earlier periods of naivete and repeatedly brings up that he thought it would be better. But instead, more and more evil shits become commonplace and Jeff returns to the fear that any opposition will be suppressed by state violence. This song builds into a real rocker over the course of its quick runtime, and I think it nails the hopelessness of thinking the world will resolve its contradictions peacefully. Track 10, Graveyard Song. Awaken by a blaring notification. Here, Jeff contrasts a bombardment of horrifying news against the mundane tedium of life, painting a relatable picture of being simultaneously overstimulated and understimulated in a weird gray area. Tweaking yet somehow. In the same way my favorite tune from No Dream told the haters to scram, this track says don't waste your energy extending an olive branch to losers. 
if the toxic bullshit bubbling up to the surface of our society is appealing to you, then you're too far gone. Time to get the fuck in the ground so the rest of the world can move on. The instrumental starts out sparse and jangly, but by the bridge, grimier elements enter to supplement lyrics about torn flesh, noting the way guns always seem to end up in the hands of the most grotesque scum imaginable. Jeff wraps up the tune by unequivocally saying, fuck all these people, let this stupid and hateful world collapse so we can rebuild. This cut approaches the five minute mark, but doesn't feel like it to me at all. It's captivating throughout and starts a pair of incredible tracks here as the album's wrapping up. Let it crash, let it fall, it doesn't do any good at all. Track 11, Three Summers. At this point in the record, Jeff's been going hard for a half hour plus, but this seven minute epic closer proves he still has a ton to say. It chugs along with a grungy instrumental that provides a backing for him to go off one last time. The ideas start flowing with Rosenstock still hung up on the inequality inherent in his own life. Taking a premium ride share to an all expenses paid overseas trip, while knowing full well other folks are in dire straits at the same time this is going on. On the chorus is here, Jeff repeatedly asks, how am I ever going to participate in polite society when I can see all the changes that need to be made in the world? Having a revolutionary spirit in a world designed specifically around quelling that impulse is demoralizing, and Jeff struggles with that throughout this final cut. Asking how long can you defend against a cheat code is a perfect way of describing a world where working class folks can be exploited with impunity, all while being expected to just grin and bear it. Despite the reality of that bleak dynamic, Jeff offers up a hopeful message as the tune's wrapping up. He takes an idea from Bonus Oceans a decade ago and turns it on its head in a cool way. The record ends with Jeff saying he's permanently different. There's a ton of growth on this record, but also some depressing realities about the world not getting better that he's been forced to come to terms with. I think the message here about staying an active participant in the world around you, even when life seems set up to beat you down, is a perfect conclusion to the record. This feels like a huge climax to a larger than life album. Verdict. Overall, I love this record. Jeff Rosenstock is the best to ever do it, and this is one of his best albums. Everything clicks for the full 40 minutes here, whether he's rocking out or chilling out. Jeff's observations about the world are as insightful and biting as ever, and this one is an extreme no-brainer. 10 out of 10. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the record. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the release, my critique, or the review format in general. Making this is a lot of work, but also fun and definitely worth it if it helps some people wrap their head around the record. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Kept you waiting, huh?